What's going on guys? Unknown player here today. We've got a bunch more Destiny 2 stuff to discuss and round up and go over. So Bungie have actually announced a ton of exotics that are going to be completely changed and overhauled basically, their perks upgraded. Four of those we know of, so we're going to be talking about what those are and how they're going to be changing. There's also some stuff about the next faction rally event, which we'll be talking about, and some pretty interesting stuff about Crimson Days you probably didn't know about. So as usual, lots of topics rounded up in this one video for you guys. So let's begin talking about exotic weapons. Now the most interesting thing is they've fully laid out how they plan to buff them, and honestly I was expecting pretty small things like we've buffed their stability by five percent or have done a little bit more damage but they've actually gone all out and they are really doing some massive changes which i didn't expect to be honest so they said they want to make exotics more exotica whatever that means but their goals are a tuning pass for exotic gear focus on adding or increasing player power spikes they're going to focus on low usage items so basically all the exotics that everyone's forgotten about and nobody uses at all and obviously each exotic is designed to kind of have its own kind of play style or power spike as they call it and they're trying to improve that now the first one they talk about and go really in depth with is the graviton line which funny enough i talked about my latest video i said how it looks amazing i wish it was a good gun but it's actually complete trash and bungie literally said the exact same thing they said the feedback was that it looks great and sounds great but it's really hard to get kills with it because all the damage at the end of the burst where all the recoil is as well so it kicks way too hard they also mentioned how the bodies that cause explosions go flying so far they pretty much can cause no damage because so far away from enemies so what they're doing to this weapon is reducing its recoil and also changing it from three round burst to two so it's going to shoot two bullets now one norm bullet and then one high damage high recoil shot Yeah. Now they're also addressing the ragdoll mechanic so that when you shoot someone with the weapon the body isn't going to go flying into nowhere where it can't damage anything. They said the defeated opponent is going to float back up in the air and they're also going to make the explosion bigger, increase the damage and the most interesting thing is they're going to add some void field projectiles that seek out remaining targets. So not at all what I was expecting to be honest normally when Bungie buff stuff it's very kind of like safe and like kind of trying to not make anything overpowered. You can see a demonstration of the whole ragdoll mechanics right here. Basically when you shoot something not a shank you shoot a normal enemy, the body just goes flying away so far that, like, there, it's just not going to do any damage or anything. And the damage it does is pretty tiny. Yeah, this weapon, like that, it just... <laughs> that's not going to damage anything. It's not like Firefly, where they explode on the spot and damage enemies surrounding it. So now the body's going to stay still, float up in the air, and spawn some kind of projectiles to damage other things in the in the vicinity. I think the weird thing is that this weapon's going to be a two-shot burst, so definitely very strange. There aren't many of those in Destiny, but I'm wondering how much kick that last bullet is going to have, because that is definitely the point of it. They still want to have that as a feature, the thing that makes it exotic, the fact that it shoots one normal bullet, and then the other one is supercharged, and it's got like a ton of recoil and a ton of damage. They did also mention how technically numbers-wise, this would be one of the best DPS pulse rifles in the game. They said, in theory, Theory, you'll have an edge above all other pulse rifles so it should be interesting to see if it's actually overpowered or not bungee patches are normally very very safe and trying to not make anything else overpowered so i'm doubting it'll be crazy but i'm hoping it is obviously crucibles where things need to be balanced but inside pve i just want to see every exotic just be crazy and ridiculous over the top and just really really fun to use now the interesting thing is they mentioned weapons that are not getting buffed so these weapons that are completely fine as they are basically and bungie are not touching them so that is firstly the merciless which is probably the best exotic in the game to be honest celesto i actually love that weapon thing is very very good the wardcliff coil obviously again one of the best weapons in the game Maida multi tool still very good in crucible the colony is pretty much just a fun weapon yeah i agree it's pretty fine as it is legend of Acrius and the vigilance wing so those weapons that are not being touched apparently they're fine as they are and everything else is going to be changed they did mention that also of course the march update is going to have a sandbox balancing pass so pulse rifles are getting a buff apparently so that is also why they're not going to buff the vigilance wing because the pulse rifle as a whole is going to get a buff in the patch it's not going to buff the exotic as well because it's already going to get its base kind of stats improved so now let's talk about what other exotics are actually getting changed so the interesting thing is that bungie tweets out this image right here and they said some of your favorite weapons are about to become more powerful so obviously the three exotic weapons being held here are some of the exotics also getting buffed so firstly we have the darcy the exotic sniper rifle this thing is probably one of the coolest looking exotics in the game I remember first seeing it in a trailer, it looked amazing, it just looks so, so cool, but obviously it does not perform that greatly. I mean, there's already a health bar in Destiny, so I don't know why you want to look in your scope to see an enemy's health when you can already see it in the middle of your screen. But the interesting thing is that, like the Graviton Lance, they aren't just going to be slightly buffing something. It's very possible they'll just overhaul the entire weapon. But once again, we know that snipers as a whole in both PvE and PvP are going to get buffed in the March update, so... We don't know how that buff is going to affect it, and also the individual Darcy buff. So in theory, this weapon should be getting a double buff, and hopefully can be actually decent this time. Now, another weapon also very, very forgotten about is the Sturm. Of course, you can see it in the image as well. So this is, I would say, probably my number one most forgotten about exotic. I just completely forgot this thing was in the game. I mean, obviously, everyone used it on day one. The pretty much main purpose of this was to get a really high-level hand cannon, so we infuse it into, like, a better Devils for the raid. The main purpose they wanted was to, of course, use it in combination with the Sturm and Dragon so you use both of them you kind of swap out the two 
and don't reload. Again, something that sounds good in theory, but in gameplay, it doesn't end up being all too useful. So I think on this one, they could definitely do a tone down the recoil. They seem to know that just little buffs are just not going to cut it right now. So really want to see what they do with this thing. It's a, by far one of my most forgotten about exotics in all of Destiny 2. Also, the reload is really, really slow on this thing. They could definitely improve that too. So next up on the chopping block, which was also, of course, inside the image, was this bad boy, the fighting lion. Probably one of the biggest memes in Destiny 2. This weapon at launch was just so horrifically bad. And the funny thing about this is they did actually do a pretty significant buff to this weapon. They went and overhauled it pretty dramatically. So where this weapon is supposed to come in handy is against any kind of shielded enemy. And you basically kind of swap back and forward to using a primary and then swapping out and then popping a shield off and then putting it back out and the ammo is going to be reloaded. So that's kind of what it's supposed to do. So it's basically going to be round two of the Fighting Lions buff. They already tried once and now there's going to be another attempt to make it hopefully usable this time. Is that a bubble? in 2018. I always forget that bubbles even exist in this game. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment down below. Which exotic weapon in Destiny 2 would you like to see get a buff? Off the top of my head, the ones that I think definitely could do with some love is first the Rat King. That weapon is just so badly in need of some improvements. I think another weapon which could definitely see some love would be the Jade Rabbit. That weapon got butchered when it came into Destiny 2. If you knew how to use it and basically stuck at long ranges, it was one of the most highest damaging weapons in the game, especially in Crucible. It was a monster. So Jade Rabbit would be cool to see that get buffed and maybe the Xbox people who have never used it before will be able to see what a good Jade Rabbit looks like. I think the third arm, which definitely sticks out as this thing needs a buff, would be the Skyburner's Oath. That thing, again, I see no reason why it shouldn't be just crazy good inside PvE. Yeah, comment below, which exotic weapon do you think could do with some love? There's definitely a lot of them, but thankfully, they're actually going to be improving a lot of them and not just touching one or two and giving it a slight buff. Yeah, once again, all that stuff is happening in the March update. So March 27th, every update is pretty much at the end of the month. And obviously, I'll be covering pretty much every update and everything new happens with the game. So if you're still wondering how the game is doing and checking back every now and again, then pretty much stay tuned and I'll get you guys covered. So moving on, let's talk about Faction Rally. The next one is going to be on the 20th of February, next Tuesday. So this is going to be the second Faction Rally of Season 2. The first one was definitely a mess. This time around, they're adding six weapons into the loot pool. So the three auto rifles that were winning weapons last time. Now on top of that, they're going to be adding the new Monarchy Scout Rifle, which is actually a very good weapon. Also the Hand Cannon from Future Walkout and the Dead Orbit Linear Fusion Rifle. And the three winning weapons are going to be the new Monarchy Pulse Rifle, the Dead Orbit Pulse Rifle, and also a Future Walkout Scout. So in terms of which weapons to look out for, the Adverse Possession 9, which is the new Monarchy Scout Rifle that's been put into the loot pool. That's actually going to be a very good weapon. It's in the Precision Frame. It's got Flared Magwell, Steady Rounds, and also Moving Targets. So this thing's going to be a solid kind of all-round Sura Scout. The Future Walkout Hand Cannon is an Omnon one, so they're all pretty trash, to be honest. But its main perk is Threat Detector, Increased Reload Stability and Handling when enemies are in close proximity. And there's also the Dead Ender, which is the Dead Orbit Linear Fusion. This one has the main perk of Outlaw. So there you go. Let me know down below in the comments which faction you'll be pledging to. Obviously, I'll pledge to all of them across all my characters, but I think I'll probably mainly go towards New Monarchy and Dead Orbit. Pretty much mainly for the shaders. That's the only thing I care about. The weapons don't interest me all that much. But let me know what you think of it down below. Again, that's happening next Tuesday on the 20th. So moving on, I want to talk about a couple of things related to Crimson Days you probably didn't know about. Firstly, is the actual farm itself. You may not have noticed there's actually decorations here too. I mean, I won't blame you for not knowing because there's literally zero purpose of going to the farm. But yeah, there actually are decorations and flags and roses and fancy stuff here. The only reason I even know about this is because one of my followers on Twitter called Worthy a Brute told me there's basically some decorations of the farm. So yeah, little known fact that probably nobody even noticed because no one even goes here. I feel bad for Tara Khan. Probably no one ever visits her. She probably is very lonely. Let's have her open some engrams so she can feel, feel like she's doing something again. Masterwork, nice. And nothing I need. If you're wondering why I've got so many exotic engrams basically saved up, it's because I have every exotic in the game. So there is literally zero purpose in opening them. But yeah, if you're incredibly bored and have nothing else to do, then go pay Tara Khan a visit. She's very lonely and check out the fancy roses inside the farm. So if you are a completionist, if you want to try and get as much stuff as possible before the event ends, funnily enough, Crimson Doubles is not the best way to do so, so it's pretty strange. In terms of time efficiency, the best way is by purely leveling up. Out of every activity in the game, so raids, strikes, crucible, everything, public events is basically the answer to everything inside Destiny 2. But they do give you a pretty big chunk of XP every time you do one. So things that are going to help you level up faster is going to be well rested, of course, when you first hop on, you get increased gains. There are also, of course, these fire team medallions, which going to boost your XP gains for you and your entire fire team. You probably have a couple of them lying around. If not, you can buy some from good old Tess. How much do they cost? They are 50 bright dust, so you can probably afford a few of them. And then something else you can do is, of course, use a ghost shell, which gives you XP on a location. So gain 10% more XP on IO or gain 10% more in strikes. If you have one for the EDZ, that's going to help you a ton because the flashpoint this week is the EDZ. But yeah, well rested buff, the fire team medallions and also the ghost shells. Do a bunch of public events and also patrols. They help a little bit, adventures. But generally, that is how things work. 
work. It is pretty strange how the most efficient way is not by doing crimson doubles, but pretty much some tips for those you looking to get some engrams as fast as possible, not spend too much time. I've gotten basically trash from all these engrams so far. Eon Swift again. I got two of them in my last video and I got another one just now. I wasn't lying when I said I got these like 15 times. I actually just got the exact ghost shell that I was missing that I just talked about. Gain 10% more XP inside the European dead zone. So there you go. Do public events, do your flashpoint, two birds, one stone. That should help you with those crimson engrams. So there you go, a ton of stuff I want to round up and discuss with you guys. As always, if you did enjoy the video and if you want to show some support on it, then like ratings down below would be much appreciated. I know a ton of you don't even play Destiny 2 anymore, but you still stick around to watch my videos and see what's up. That's what I try to do with these videos, kind of keep you informed on what's happening with the game, what's changing, what's getting buffed, all the updates and when stuff's happening. So I do really appreciate all of your support on the channel. You guys are amazing. If you aren't subscribed, then make sure you do so. Of course, you can stay up to date with all my videos. And in the meantime, if you want to watch a video I made talking about everything inside Crimson Days, all the updates, everything new, and everything that was to do then you can click the images just appeared on screen it's a really good video a lot of you guys enjoyed it appreciate you guys watching as always and i'll see you guys in the next one